Morning all, hope you're well. Cool, look at that. As they say in the game, that's like a sheet of formica. It's been quite uh, foggy this morning, but as I'll be burnt off with the sun. Go too far to the south, that get a bit, you see the old sun, but yeah, look at that. That is like, so I went over a trowel in it. That's a low water in a couple of hours, so I'm now gonna get the boot ready. I might change the plugs in the engine, because we changed the plugs over a few days before, and I realised why I changed the plugs over. One of them stuck, one of them was, that's, that's farting now and then on one of the cylinders, so it's obviously a dodgy plug, so I'm now gonna go change the plugs over and get the boot ready. Can't beat a bit of maintenance and all that. I'm gonna go and get the low water for some heron. That looked absolutely fantastic today, didn't it? I think the old chap is going as well. I ain't going with him, I'm still full of coal and don't want to give it to him. So uh, the plan is let him go off before me, let him shoot, get all the seals, and I'm gonna go slip in behind him. Well, slip the fleet of nets in. Don't people say bad things? <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, let him have all the seals and me, hopefully, reap a few fish. He's got twice as much gear as I've got, only got eight nets in the boot, he's probably got about 20. So we'll see how that pan out. Then again, I might go off before him. Depends if he's late. <laughs> All right, see you in a bit. I don't know if anyone's got one of these Fruno 1623 radars, but I broke the bloody power socket on the back. I don't know if you can still get them or not, but if anyone's got one of these, what's knackered and don't work, could just get in contact and I'll quite really buy it off you. I only want it for the socket on the back for the power lead. I bloody broke the plastic ring, lock and ring and everything off it. <laughs> well, as it's been foggy, I just put a icon where I'm launching. Obviously, this house icon is where I'm launching today, but that's on the ebb. But on the flood, I launch at the other one. But I just make sure it's on there so I know what's happening. Nothing worse than struggling to come ashore if it's foggy. But now I exactly know where I am. I don't know where it is, but I just see the seals swimming along here, waiting for me to launch. Oh, there it is, see? There's a seal there waiting for me to launch. I don't want to be a sneaky bugger, because my old man ain't come down yet. I don't want to be a sneaky bugger. I wait for him to launch and shoot first and let him take the seals up there. <laughs> see, that's what you get for spawning me, Dad. Should have kept the horses, as Mum say. Cool. just let him look at that water. That look sheer as old for heron. You want it like mud, really? Is that high, it's a little bit high pressure here. Look, there you go, I'm set up now. I'm all geared up, anchors tied on. I better reverse back. I'm just waiting to see the old man come down. I haven't seen him yet. I thought they'd have been down over now. But that was fucky this morning. His mate has got about an hour drive, so he may have cancelled it, who knows. Well, that's the anchor in the beach. Obviously, to the north of my boot. Just on the ebb, just down tide. So he's just anchoring the beach, give it a good kick in, and the route run along and drop to the boot. Simple, just as the last, same as the last trip or two. Easy launching, just got to be planned out right. Well, the old chap, he's just come down, you can see him in the distance. But obviously, already launched mine. I better get in, get the engine started up. Well, it looks like every man his dog's off now. We've got Tommy Williams, Dad Orchard, the old man behind me. Everyone and his dog. Well, that's a lovely day for it. There's seals out there, but hopefully... I don't know how quickly I can shoot, but I might let the old man shoot first. I'm not going full whack, I'm just going to make three-quarter throttle. Because I hauled these in the boat last trip and then run them into a bin, they're the wrong way round. So I've got to shoot outside in. Didn't see much time, but I've got a lot of good lick. The old man ain't beating me, that's for that way. I'm not even three quarter throttle.
little man's got a Silver 30 on. What's a basically 100 horsepower restricted top end, and he can't keep up with me. <laughs> Speedy Gonzalez, love it. Fastest fingers first. The big race with the old chap. <laughs> we beat the old bugger. I'm shooting away. Exactly on his mark. <laughs> Brilliant. Obviously, I've only got eight nets, he's got two fleets, so in theory, he could blind me, but I hope. I'll still beat him up here with his brand new shiny engine. <laughs> That's a problem when you and your old chap go with you and you go with your old chap, you know his marks. And that's exactly where I'm shooting. Oops, getting carried away. There's the old chap, he's going further to the south and shooting. He's slowing down now, he's probably going to shoot there, but I'm further off from what he's shooting. He doesn't normally shoot this far off. So he's all right, unless he shoot one big fleet of 20 nets, but I'm further off what he normally is. But the last time I shot, we normally shoot from there outwards, but I've shot from outside in. But yeah, he's now look like he's shooting. See, I got a bit excited there racing the old chap. <laughs> yeah, that old rope pulled a bit tight. I quickly knocked it in reverse. I got too busy carried away and yarning and laughing. See, that's what happened when you play silly buggers. But I'm glad I beat the old chap down here. I'll have to rib him for that. That'll be a good giggle. Him and his all singing shiny engine as me and my crusty old thing was 30 odd year old. And I done him. That's still a good laugh, isn't it? That's only a laugh. I think he's sitting inside there, letting me drift to the, drift away a bit and open up the gap. He's going in the same place where I, where he normally shoot, but he's letting me 
drift to the north a bit and let me clear so I give him enough distance. But that'll be fine, I'm sure. I'm now seeing the old chaps bay waves rocking me a bit. But the water off here is a lot better colour, look at that. You can see on the back of that wave, that's like mud off here. I'll just stay you on it. Lovely. Nice and dirty and crappy coloured, full of mud. Let's hope there's a few fish in it, that's what we want. A few little fishies. There's one of them flutes standing up. I imagine that's just tangled. Let's have a look on the plotter. That's a bit, all that is is temperature. That's a temperature chart. But there's some, so we can turn this up a bit. You can see on the bottom, it like hair and there, deep. Think of them, like, them little hair and what we saw the other day. But that's just temperature. That's flipped between five and seven degrees for some reason. That must be coming up the water slightly. There's a little bit of hair near the bottom. There's nothing up top. But these nets are deep. Like I said before, they're 17 foot lints with nine foot strop on them, strops on them. So they go down deep. Well, it's not very often I go full out, full clappers on the men eight board. Normally I always go at three quarter throttle for best economy and fuel efficiency and everything. But then that was a race to the death. I had to get it over the side, so I give it the big one. <laughs> Full chat all the way. Only about three mile, I imagine. But that was good fun. I thought the old man, I bet the old man thought he was going to beat me. Oh, look, he's now shooting. He's now shooting away. I bet he thought he was going to beat me with his new engine. <laughs> and he didn't. <laughs> but then again, he's got a, he's got a tac, uh, well, I've got a tactile 21. And he's got the old... Orkney 23, well them Orkney 23s are quite a lot bigger boot than this. I can only fit two net bins in and he can put three in. And that's another over a foot wider. That's a lot more stable boot than this because you walk around these tactiles and they rock and move. But you can jump around one of them Orkney 23s and they're stable as hell. They are a better boot for this sort of work. The only downside is if there's a lot of swell or anything, the nose of these tactiles cut through it lovely. Well, they don't, the Orkney slam because they're so, so much wider. They don't cut through it. So you've got to go down to like displacement speeds in them in a bit of swell, but you can still nip along at 12 knots in these. So there's plus points and minus points. They are a good boot, the Orkney 23s. I think I'd swap any day of the week. <laughs> yeah, the old chap has gone outside of me. I suppose level with the end of the harbour is probably how much our gear and he's still going. So look at that. I would say he's shooting the whole 20 nets in one big fleet. Well, I noticed the other day, there weren't so much fish in the beach, well, heads, so I've gone off a little bit. But yeah, he's shooting, he's shooting 20 nets, he is. He ain't buggering about. But yeah. Like the... I can't see any of them half furry friends, what's a positive? But who knows? Well, if you look at the gear, you can see the ank that see the down about there. Well, you, you think I'll shot the gear the wrong way? Because obviously it's ebon, and conventionally you shoot the gear that way and it come round. But with this point here, you see them couple of people on, that point, that's really deep water, it's about 40 foot of water, 100 yards off that point, and the tide rush around the point so fast, that push your inside end round. So you got to shoot them the wrong way. I remember when I first started fishing here when I was a kid, I got my own boot. I shot the wrong way. I went, Dad, what's going on there? He went, you pudding. <laughs> you shot the wrong way. So even us further north, I'll catch up and go past that. When we go around that point. Cool. That's looking a hell of a lot of marks coming through there now. They're deep, but there's a lot of marks. I'll have a look in these nets, make sure they're not airing. Did not get a full up. I don't want that on my own, that's for certain. Let's have a quick look at the inside of this gear. Got some heron in there, I think I can feel a little bit of kicking. Oh, I think it's where the other ropes twist up on the gear, just pull it out.
Um, oh, there's one. First Aaron of the trip. That's a cracking Aaron. Control man style. Give it a kiss. I can't see any more though. About a little while longer, we ain't drifted far. Well, there's a pellet standing up just down here, so I'll have a look, make sure it didn't just tangle up. That's the engine up, must be, bit, must be low on oil, or half full of oil when you lift it up, that kill quiet. Don't look much in there, do they? I don't think you can see it, but along there is a sand bank, scrooby sands. And that's breeding se season for seals. They're having pups and breeding and stuff, and you can hear them howling. They're all howling like dogs. Obviously not that, it is a dog bark on the beach. Them seals, like, they're all howling like, ooh, something like a pack of wolves. You might probably won't be able to hear it on here. But there you go, that's life. Well, I've just been on the phone to the old chap, and uh, I ain't got no seals on me, but he's got two seals on him. What's surprising the difference is, is because I shot first, and normally I'd get them. But the thing is, I shot outside in, and I'm still over a fleet off the beach now. And they might have been swimming along the beach, seen his gear whilst near the beach coming out and hit his gear and come out. But he said there's two seals on the outside end right near his boot, but I can't see any seals. But look at that, there's no fish on the fish finder now either. So who knows, it doesn't look good, do it? He said, give the engine a good run and a nice cup of coffee, keep you warm. We'll soon find out in a minute what's happening. Well, that looked a little bit better. You see them little thin lines? They all look like heron, but them ones are red and yellow, so they're telling you the more dense. That looked more like a good heron mark. But we have found in the last couple of years, there's been a lot of little heron about, what are too small and they go straight through the nets. They're like year old heron. Like the average size heron are two year old and the big ones are three years plus. But time will tell if you get any. Look, nothing's sunk down and the nets are chittled up a bit. So who, know, who knows what's happening? There's one or two standing up, but once I got a dollop, then again you come over the Snickham's point, and because it's all undulating, that swirl a bit, that can pull the pellets up and down like a yo and you think you've got a shitload and you think the nets are sinking, and that's just the turbulence in the water playing with the nets. <laughs> I'm just going to have a little look on the end, see what's happening. One of them pellets that keep going down. Oh, that's a lovely one. Well, that's a smashing error, that is. That's definitely a selected See us tangled up there. That's what's going on. Every little hole they find, they go straight through them pellets. Sod's law. 
can't see any more fish. Very disappointing. Oh, there's another errand. So we've got three. That's enough for my tea. I'll just flick these back out and job a good one. Well, them three fish are really the standard of fish we get. Wait, that one's a regular heron. That one's a selected large. And that one's sort of like in between. That's like a two year and that's a three year old heron. So that's a slightly different sizes. But yeah, at least I've got some for my tea. <laughs> Can't believe I'm saying that traditionally this time of year. We should be knee deep by now. But I've only got eight nets, so it ain't a lot. The old man's got 28, so he, he fish inside and off a little bit. Well, I'm just fishing in the mid middle sort of thing, so we'll see. Some days I fish closer to the beach and some are further off, but as I'm on my own, I don't want too many if they did lift, but I don't, it's not looking very good. If they can lift, they'd lift by now, and you'd see all them pellets standing up, and I don't know where you can see them. They're just laying down flat. There's one or two white ones standing up, but I think they're caught up. You see that? You see, like you see the little swirls there. That's Snickham's corner. That is that undulating ripples and that sort of thing. That's probably the ripples and undulating what's causing them pellets to stand up. Well, I've just done a radio check with the old chap. That's just a coincidence that my radio and his radio both packed up and working within a week of each other. So he's bought a new radio. I bought a new radio, and yeah, just give me a radio check. Make sure everything's working all right. That's always better to be safe and sorry. We don't, to be honest, the distance we're off, you could use a mobile phone and get to land. But obviously, if you're going further off, you need the radio, really. We do all carry uh, PLBs on our life jackets, so if anything happens, pull the handle and that send off the location bit beacon. So we are covered in several different ways. Obviously, being commercial, they're a lot stricter. Well, they are, there's rules when you're commercial. When you're just pleasure, you can do what you want, can't you? You could get a bathtub and stick a pair of Rolex in it if you wanted to. It seemed very strange to me. That wind and the water's done today, ain't a lot of wind. That's slightly northerly, very like two or three mile northerly wind. That's just pushing me round to get the oars out. Yeah, I know I need to replace the leather on the yours but it's just pushing us around and pushes out a bit so I'll just give it a few rows so we don't pull the gear around. Oh, be it. And the rope around your sub floor. Yeah, let's give it another few. The all lovely job. And now the nets are lovely and straight. I was pulling the inside end round, so I just nip that back. You see all the nets there, they look lovely and straight, don't they? Cracking. Well, I've been seal free all day, and I just need to send a seal swim up to my gear from my old chap. And I can see a seal sitting off his gear, sitting off him, so he can't have a lot in there. That bloody thing just swam this way. Not what I want. I had a lovely drift with not one seal on us. And no one just turned up off the old chap. That proved they won't come up here if there's a lot of fish. So he obviously ain't got a great deal. There's a little bugger. Just sitting off my outside end. Right in the, just got his nose in the gear. I can't see him eating nothing, but I'm sure he will do. There's another seal swimming off my old man this way. There can't be a lot in his gear if there two seals and they come this way. Bloody things, not what I want. I'll have to haul early and try and get what I can get. <laughs> you know what they do, they'll soon hoof down any heron. Well, that's no time to start hauling. I'll crack on now.
not expecting a lot, but definitely turn them around anyway.
showing up and that's in deep water right? touch boot round slightly All the seals right on the up, right on the last couple of nets, as you can see there's nothing in these, quite a lot of yellow fever. These last couple of nets are not the fish. Yeah, that isn't too bad, it's a lovely day. That's easy to haul it. I put a net pin down here and bottom the straight back in the net pin. That's 
that? Very disappointing. That's very poor that was, wasn't it? I'm thinking all them heron moving through, them heron marks, all them little diddy ones. This tide has run on for a lot longer than it normally do. See, look, it's still trickling along now, and that's half an hour past the tide. I see them trickling through there, but I thought I'd haul these, this gear, before the seals got in there. They got a little bit in the end. Well, I might nip over there and go and see the old chap, see what he's got. He's only just started hauling, he left his long run, me. Well, I just spoke to the old chap behind me, and he's actually covered in seals. They're everywhere around him, but he ain't even hauled yet. I saw what's one, two seals eating there, and all just yarning to him. But yeah, I I hauled early because two seals come over from him. But there's sure a dozen or so around him. He's getting absolutely hammered. I can't see he's even getting a lot of fish. There's so many seals here. But there you go. I know, motoring back, it's been a lovely day, can't complain with that, can I? So, uh, see you back at the beach! Well, that's something you don't see every day. A pair of swans paddling along in the sea. I wonder what it was in the distance. I don't know if there's a couple of swimmers with them floaty packs on, but obviously not. They just paddled a couple hundred metres along the beach here. Don't know what they're paddling to, don't know why, but... They obviously like it. <laughs> well, the winter hooja mount there is uh, just cleaned. Most of the heron have selected large, cracking heron, but there isn't enough of them. I've probably got a couple of stun of heron, and probably about a stun and a half of whitens. I'll get them all separated and sorted out, and I don't have a smoke a few all just run them to the market. There ain't a lot there, though, but we'll see what the old man's got. Okay, hope you enjoyed it. Uh, Catch you later. Bye.